Hey guys, today I'm heading down to Porsche Greenwich to meet up with Rui Morera. He is the general manager that helped me get the Taycan Cross Turismo I'm in right now. He says that he has a 918 that hasn't been washed or cleaned or done anything in a couple of years. I think it has about 100 miles or so and it's for sale. So we're going to head down there and get it cleaned up. I am super excited. I love the 918. That and a whole lot more on this episode of Drive and Protect. Think of your social security number. No, <laughs> I'm not thinking of any of that. Upon arrival at the Porsche dealership in Greenwich, Connecticut, I met up with Rui Morera, the GM, to take a look at one of the lowest mile 918s, maybe in the world, but certainly the lowest mile one I've ever worked on for sure. But she wasn't alone yes. in the garage. Yes, and a GT3. I, I, could, I almost missed a GT3 in the corner. Unbelievable. This is by far my favorite dream Porsche. Carrera GT, silver, unbelievable car. All right, so obviously this is a 918, but I've never seen one in this condition. It's, it's, uh, it's got water spots. It's a little on the uh, dirty side, to say the least. Uh, very much so. This is owned by one of our 918 VIPs, yep. and it's been in storage since new. It's got 162 miles, wow. pristine condition body-wise, but very dirty. Yeah. We're talking about five years of being stored inside. Yeah, water spots, look at this stuff. I've never seen a 918 like this before. It is, and the client decided he's gonna let go of it and part with it, and we're gonna sell it through the dealership, so I figured I'd call you down and get this baby ready and perfect. This is awesome, I'm super excited. As you can see, for a multi-million dollar car, it's not currently in a condition consistent with its value and the allure it has with the supercar community. Clearly, it's been parked in the garage, and as most storage or parking garages do, from time to time, they leak minerals, aka hard water. In this case, it was all over the car, and it will require a polish later on in the detail. Now, because I only have one day to do the car, Greenwich's detailer and a longtime buddy of mine, Renan from Ultimate Gloss, is going to help me with the cleanup. So, step one is a healthy power washing. As you can see, even after the power wash, most of the staining wasn't actually removed. Next, I filled the foam cannon with ammo foam and soaked the 918. With about 162 or so miles, this is likely its first or maybe its second wash ever. So in theory, the paint shouldn't have any white marks or what I call love marks, other than the water spots that you're seeing now. So the less touching you can do now, the easier your polishing will be later in this unique case. Step two is a healthy wash with microfiber towels. Now, when I'm washing, I'm also feeling the paint with my hands to see if it needs to be clayed. Actually feels pretty good. Doesn't need no. doesn't need any clay or nothing. It was never outside. And in this case, other than the watermarks, the paint was actually super smooth. With Renan working on the emblems, I cleaned the wheels that had a bit of tar or some sort of gooiness attached to them. You can see it right here. My guess is this was the original glue from the wheel stickers or the wheel protection upon delivery that was never fully removed. Now over time, that glue collects dust and it looks like this. As I was drying down the car, Rui introduced me to his buddy, Phil the Magic Man, who was interested in the 918. Yes. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm Phil, Phil nice to meet you. The Magic Man, huh? That's right. All right, have we ever met before? Uh, no. Mm, all right, I want you to do this. I know you're very big into cars. You, you, you do an amazing job detailing. Yeah. I've watched all your videos. I'm like nervous all of a sudden. I'm like, <laughs> watch checking, my, wallet, checking my wallet. Watch watch. Like, yeah, I'm ready to get that. <laughs> I want you to go back and think of the very first car you ever had. The make, the model. Okay. You could even remember the smell of it. The inside. smell, the color, I, I remember exactly what is it is. Is there any way I would know this? No. Have you ever told any of us this before? No. All right, I want you to think of the, the make of this car. Think of the first letter. Okay. You see how you said okay so quickly? That tells me that the letter's in the beginning of the alphabet. If the letter was later on, you would have thought a little bit longer. Okay. Think of the actual model of the car now. Okay. 
Think of the first letter. Okay. Second letter. Yeah. Third letter. Yeah. You did something different right there. Uh, think of a color that begins with that letter, if there is one. The third letter? Yeah. Uh, if you can, okay, do you it. have a color? Yeah. You're going with, you're going with yellow. Yeah. So to me, if I had to guess, your first car ever, it's not on any of your videos. No. Tell us, what was the make and model of the first car you ever had? It was awesome. It was blue. It was a Buick Skylark. A Buick Skylark. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. How did you... Eric, I, speaking of cards, I have a deck right on me. How sure. random. A, a musician has a... Yeah. I'm always carrying decks, except I don't play with full decks. You yeah, know what I mean? I'm My sure. family and I, we don't play full decks here. After the impromptu show was over, we got back to work by using Renan's mini master blaster to remove the remaining trapped water while I dried the door jams. For step three, I did a quick test spot to see how responsive the water spotting would be to a bit of polishing. The success of the polishing will depend on how long the minerals actually sat on the paint and if there was any protection on the surface prior to those drips. Okay, now that the car is clean and dry, it actually looks pretty good, but we do have those water spots that we showed before. I have no idea how they got there, but they did etch the paint a little bit. How we're gonna get those out is just with a one-step polish. We're gonna use a yellow pad, yellow polish, light back and forth. We don't need to go crazy. Why? Because there's 162 miles on this car. We wanna leave as much paint on there as possible, but at the same time, removing those imperfections. This is working, so we're gonna repeat that on the few areas. This car is gonna be good to go. Next, we use the three inch machine on the tail lights and the door jams, as well as the carbon fiber pieces in the front. Once the paint was corrected and the water stains were removed, Renan applied Ammo Gelee Pro wheel coating to the wheels, while I applied Ammo Reflex Pro coating to the paint and the clear coated carbon fiber. To do this, first shake the bottle well to disperse the antibacterial additives, prime your microfiber applicator, and coat a small section at a time, maybe 3x3 three three or 4 foot by 4 foot, depending on how quick the panel flashes and turns to a rainbow. This time frame will vary by geographical region, but usually it's between 30 seconds to about a minute. While I was finishing the coating, Renan cleaned up the glass before I quickly wiped down the dusty interior with lather in a microfiber towel. Again, there was nothing major on the inside because there was only 160 something miles, but it was dusty and it had some fingerprints on the buttons. Outside, Renan applied mud tire dressing to the Michelins. Then I got the key from the service department and pulled her outside in the sun for one last check over. Larry. Hey. This car looks spectacular. Here, by the way, there are your keys. This is exactly what the client was looking for, and I'm sure we're going to have no problem selling the car yeah. for him. I think this so, too. This looks stunning. Yeah. Earlier today, remember that gentleman that came in? Yeah. So, he's a big fan, follows you. Cool. His kids follow you. Uh -huh. uh, they watch all your videos, and they notice that you were here today, and they're wondering if you have time. Oh, boy. If you wouldn't mind. Oh, this is his car? This is his car. Oh, nice. Can't exactly say no to a Carrera GT, but uh, yeah, I gotta text my wife and tell her I'm gonna be late, but yeah, we can totally do it. It is so appreciated. <laughs> yeah. So with that, it was now time to freshen up the Carrera GT, but since this was sort of unexpected, Renan had a bunch of other cars to do to prep for some customers coming in, but if he finishes early, I'm gonna bend his arm again for his help. The first thing I noticed is the tires have a light brown residue on them. This discoloration is what's referred to as tire blooming. This is usually caused from rubber additives known as anti-ozonants degrading and failing over time. 
During manufacturing, these are actually added to the rubber to protect the tire from UV rays that cause dryness and cracking from exposure. However, if the car just sits for very long periods of time without driving or exercising the tire, it loses its durability, it loses its strength, and then this brownish crud sort of comes to the surface. Usually when I see this, it means that the tires need to be replaced and or the car just needs to be driven more often. Anyhow, I'm gonna repeat the exact same steps I did on the 918, but this time on a Carrera GT. A little later, as a thank you from Rui, he actually gave me the original tires from the 918 that had the same problem. They just weren't driven in X amount of years. So over that time, you just have to get rid of the tires no matter how many miles you put on them. So what I'm gonna do is take them back to the studio and work on an upcoming project. Now, subscribe to the studio channel for more updates on my quote unquote arts and crafts project with 918 tires. Now the tail lights were in really rough shape. So here I needed to actually bump up the abrasion to a wool cutting pad first with compound, then switch to a foam pad and polish. And when I finished, it looked absolutely brand new, even without any protection on it yet. Next, I applied Gelee Pro to the wheels, while Renan applied mud tire dressing after finishing up his last new car delivery prep for the day, so that was super helpful. He and his assistant cleaned the glass and they vacuumed the interior, cleaned the interior while I was applying new Reflex Pro finishing wax, AKA blush, to the paint. At this point in the day, we were running so far behind because we took on the other car that I asked Rui to roll up his sleeves and get in on the Carrera GT love, so that was kind of fun. When we were all done with the quick cleanups, the two cars next to each other looked so freaking good. They were just poster cars for sure. I was so happy. Well guys, we're all done with the 918 Spider, and this thing looks insane. It is absolutely gorgeous. Now when I arrived here today, I thought I was preparing a car for sale and I did, and this thing looks awesome. Halfway through, I got the opportunity to do a Carrera GT in the same color. This is just mind blowing. So obviously I wanted to do it. They look amazing next to each other. Th these are just poster cars that I've had and I've just dreamed about forever. So to have the opportunity to do this is a big deal for me at the dealership that I bought my own Porsche. So kind of having a moment. Anyways, I wanted to say a big thank you to Renan for helping me out. Obviously I didn't schedule both of these cars at the same time. So he swooped in and helped out. Uh, big thank you to him. Plus, if you're interested in buying this ridiculously rare car, 160 or 170 miles, something like that, reach out to PorscheGreenwich.com and ask for Rui. He is the man. He's the guy that sold me my car as well. So as always, if you guys have any questions, you know where to find me, Larry at AmmoNYC.com. I am bouncing off the walls. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. And as always, thank you guys for watching and commenting. Plus, please be sure to visit my website, AmmoNYC.com, for more helpful how-to car care videos and products in support of my mission to innovate, educate, and inspire drivers to clean, protect, and drive their cars. If you know of one that could use some love or you have a neighbor who hasn't moved a car and it's sort of rotting, I wanna take it, I wanna clean it, and get it back on the road. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you next week. Let's try this. I want you to imagine you're in Vegas, you're at the Cosmopolitan Hotel, one of my favorite hotels across from the Bellagio, and you're at the blackjack table. All right. And the dealer's dealing cards. In your mind, I want you to think of a playing card. 
Just any point. Any of card. Um, but not the ace of spades, because I did see you bite your bottom lip. <laughs> oh most my people, God. Yeah, most people when they bite the bottom lip. I am not enough. lying at all. I literally thought of the ace of spades. Okay. Make it harder. Make it something random. Okay. And you can change your mind a few times. Got it. All right, tell us the truth. What was the card in your mind? For real. The be two honest. of hearts. Is there any way we would know this? No, because I picked something completely different, the complete opposite of. Rui's been holding the deck, though, the entire time. It's not like I had 50 decks all over me. Every single one of I'm these like cards sweating all is blue. Sudden. Every single one. And no funny business, no sleight of hand. You could see they're all face down, except for one card. Oh, my God. The two of hearts. <laughs> and not only that, I was so positive that you were going to pick this. This is the only red one in the deck. How is that possible? <laughs> How did you first pick the, the one that I thought I was going to pick? Because you were biting your bottom lips, so you're most likely a higher card. Aces, I said blackjack. I'm, I'm not a psychic. I'm not a fortune a teller. Mentalist. I would have won the, yeah, the mega millions. But I have ways of influencing the way that the majority of people think. That was so weird because I, I said ace, and then uh, that's just weird. 